Hi everyone, welcome back. Pencil and wash for you today. Um, what I'm going to be doing is this scene here. I'll just sort of bring it a little bit closer. Hopefully you can kind of make out what it is. I actually done a pencil and wash. Sorry, not a pencil and wash. A pencil drawing of this last year on a time lapse video. Um, it's on my list of videos um, way back down the list. If you want to go and check that out. But today I'm going to be drawing this out on. Um, Bockingford 140 pound cold pressed paper. I'll be using an HB uh, 2B pencil to actually draw the scene out. Um, and the brushes that I I'll be using will be a 3 quarter inch flat, a number 6 round, and a number 1 detail brush. And just for a few final touch ups, I'll be using um, an HB pencil. Great, just got a comment then. Who's that? Oh, I've missed it. <laughs> I'll answer that in a minute. Um, yeah, and I'll also be using some uh, white gouache, and the colours I'll be using are lemon yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, hooker's green, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, um, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Um, yeah, so right, okay. Oh, also, I well, better not forget these. Now I've got them, I shall be using these as well. Maria Kellner's colour previewers, most certainly be using those. Right, okay, let's get busy. Okay, so the scene's already drawn out. I've got the paper taped to a board, and now I'm just wetting the paper all over with clean water. Incidentally, this will help to fix the graphite to a certain degree as well to stop it smudging during the painting. Now I'm just going in with some yellow ochre. Uh, along the horizon line just to give a little bit of atmosphere uh, applying quite a bit on the foreground path there the colour I use for the sky is cobalt blue and cerulean blue and while it's still um, wet I use a clean damp brush and I just go in and tease out a few cloud shapes I don't want too much of a sky today, just a few wispy clouds will do. Now with the tissue, I'm just mopping up some of the yellow ochre where I don't want it to be. And while it's still just damp, I'm just adding a little bit more yellow ochre into the foreground just to strengthen that up a little bit. Right, so I'll let that dry. Now I'm using a mix of, well it's actually the sky colour, it's actually cerulean blue with cobalt blue, but this time I added a touch of um, crimson in there, just to warm it up a little bit. Um, I'm using that for the distant trees, and while it's still wet I'm just dropping a little bit of yellow ochre. Uh, the reason being, it's kind of late spring and everything's sort of in full bloom except these tall trees, which is just kind of coming into bud and you can just start to see them a little bit um, so dropping a little bit of yellow ochre in with the blue mix uh, will kind of send it sort of olive green and hopefully helps to suggest you know that those trees are sort of coming to life a little bit Using quite a damp, uh, well, quite a dry brush actually, um, using it on the side, just kind of dragging it across the paper for a sort of hit and miss effect um, to create the tree canopies. And uh, while they're still damp, I'm just going in um, to the bottom part of the canopy and just softening out um, that sort of hard edge that you get, you sort of get left with the dry brush. Just soften it now and pulling it in towards the tree just to give it more natural look. And 
and now I've mixed up two mixes of green. The first one is Hooker's Green with Crimson um, to make a nice dark green, which I'm using there. And then I've mixed Hooker's Green um, with a little bit of Cadmium Yellow just to make a lighter green, just for the tops of the trees. Um, I'm, st I'm dropping that in while the darker green's still wet and letting the, the two kind of diffuse together. Using the same mix uh, for these bushes just here. But I do vary the mixes just a little bit, like for example the light green mix I'll add a little bit more yellow um, here and there. Um, and strengthen up the dark green mix a little bit, just so I get a slight variation between all the bushes. So they don't all look um, too much the same. This scene actually, it's only just round the corner from where I live. Um, I go walking there several times a week. It sort of takes me from my village to the next village, uh, which is sort of a mile walk, a mile there and a mile back, so it's kind of a two mile round trip. Uh, I often take my camera and get lots of nice photos of things to draw and paint. This drawing I actually done um, as a time lapse. I think it was last year sometime, so it's uh, on my video list somewhere if you want to actually see it. That's why I didn't bother re-recording uh, any drawing uh, for this picture. I, just, I didn't think it was worth it. I've already done a time lapse, so I thought that would be good enough. Just using a little bit of yellow oak now, just on those... Uh, well, I don't actually know what they are, but little haystacks or hay bales or something. Um, in the picture, they just look like little sort of blobs of yellow, so I just put them in. It's a case of paint what you see and not what you think you see. As you can see there, look, I'm varying um, those greens a little bit, so one looks a little bit yellower than the other, um, the other one looks a little bit darker, etc. Just giving you know a nice little bit of variation. I will be glazing over them all though towards the end, which will kind of pull them together a little bit more, um, but they shouldn't look too much the same. Now I'm using lemon yellow um, to paint in these rapeseed fields. Um, they actually look very, very bright yellow, so lemon yellow is ideal for this. Then I'm using just a little bit of the darker green mix just to go in along the edge there. And you'll probably notice um, in a minute the, the video jumps along and you already see the field on the right hand side painted. There we go. Uh, I forgot to record that bit, I'm very sorry. It's exactly the same process, so it was just a light wash of um, lemon yellow with a dark green mix just put along the edge. Now for the hedge on the left hand side, I used a light green mix, very watered down for the top part of the hedge. And then for the middle part I used burnt umber, um, and then for the bottom part I used the darker green mix. And I put them all wet into wet so they all kind of merged in a little bit together. And now I'm just sort of dabbing with the brush, just creating little spots and little bits of texture um, with various combinations of the three colours that I use for the hedge. Um, I'm just sort of doing it wet into wet at the moment, uh, but I let it dry out and then I go over it again with that same process, just applying little spots here and there, um, you know, just so it looks like little leaves and little shadows and uh, it builds up a nice bit of texture. I'm softening the bottom part of the hedge out as well with a little bit of clean water and I've gone in with a little detail brush kind of flicking it down to create little sort of grass effects just along the base of the hedge as well. Sort of negative painting technique where you're actually painting round the shapes and not actually painting the shapes. So as I'm pulling down I'm leaving sort of white areas either side of each brush stroke um, to sort of create that grass effect. quite a while actually on this this part um, 
I do tend to fiddle and mess about. Um, I can hardly help myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just drawn to detail actually in paintings. I just, you know, I enjoy painting detail. Can't help it. So now I'm using that light green mix with just a little bit of yellow ochre in it. Fairly watered down just to paint these grass verges in. As you can see I'm leaving little bits of the white paper just showing through here and there. So I'm not sort of blocking it in with one solid colour. And I'm using that shadow colour, what I use for the tree canopies. And I'm just to paint along the edge there. And around the base of the hedge as well, just where there's a cast shadow. And exactly the same process for the other side. And also it's the same colours um, used for the centre of the path as well. It's a light green mix with a little bit of yellow ochre and then a little bit of shadow colour just applied on one side. Just adding a few more little spots to the hedge. Just kind of messing around now just kind of just touching up here and there just strengthening some of the shadows and using a clean damp brush just to do a little bit of blending here and there now for the telephone poles I'm using um, yellow ochre and while that's still wet I'm going in on the shadow side on the right hand side with a mix of burnt umber and cobalt blue So now I'm using the colour previewers <coughs> just to try and evaluate uh, the strength of the glazes that I want to apply to the foreground. Uh, but I decided before I actually put any glazes on there, I'd actually paint the house in first because it's a red brick building. And as you know, or if you didn't know, um, when you put red next to green, it really makes the green pop. So I thought if I put the, the red, br uh, red brick building in first, um, it might make the greens look a bit different, so it might help me evaluate the glazes a little bit better. So before I actually uh, put the glazes in, that's what I've done, I just went ahead and painted these buildings in. Um, it was just um, burnt sienna that I used. Just sort of one light wash um, on all of it, and then I went over that um, front part of the building just with a second coat just to strengthen it a little bit more, just to make it stand a little bit more forward. And for the roof tiles, I used um, cerulean blue and burnt sienna. That gives a lovely um, sort of slate tile colour, uh, which is ideal for this sort of thing. Just removing some of it actually with a clean damp brush just to highlight it a little bit there. And I'm 
using that same colour just to paint in these old barns just there. Uh, it's sort of the old boards there that were on the front of the barns sort of really weathered. They looked a little bit silver grey. Um, the photo doesn't pick that up too well but you know in real life I kind of walk, walk by this quite often and I see them all the time so they are sort of a silver grey sort of you know bleached out old weathered look about them. I'm starting to glaze. I'm just applying a light glaze um, of lemon yellow over the right hand part of the, uh, the field there. <coughs> and now I'm glazing the foreground with a mix of hooker's green and yellow ochre. Just mainly in the foreground and softening it off um, as it gets further away. apply that same glaze over those bushes there it's very light and very watered down and it's just enough just to kind of pull them together a little bit and the same on that side and the same for the hedge just hooker's green and yellow ochre just a light glaze over and just strengthening up the shadows on those distant trees there just to make the barn stand out a little bit more and now I'm using um, just neat burnt sienna just to warm up the foreground a little bit and just add a little bit of texture to the path just sort of a hit and miss sorry hit and miss sort of brush technique there just kind of dragging the brush over a little bit I'm just going around now just generally kind of strengthening some of the shadows and well fiddling that's what I'm doing isn't it <laughs> basically I'm just messing about fiddling um, but there are certain areas that need strengthening up and I'm just kind of looking at the painting and just seeing what else I can do to it just to improve it a little bit I'm just using the pencil now just to um, draw in the, the cables there they kind of got a little bit lost just under the, uh, the blue wash of paint for the sky and the same on the trees where the paint sort of washed over them and faded them out a little bit I'm just using the pencil just to uh, reinstate them a little bit not all of them just just a few just here and there just going around now just touching in a few darks on the barn here and there And now I'm using a fine detail brush with some uh, white gouache with a little bit of um, cadmium yellow in there. Just doing little spots, little sparklers, you know, little flowers, dandelion heads and things like that just sort of growing along in the grass verges there. Um, you have to be careful not to overdo this. Um, I often do get carried away and do overdo this. <laughs> um, but just a few here and there, that's all you really need, you know, just to sort of add a little bit of life to the foreground. So there we go, there's the finished painting. Hope that was helpful to you and gave you some inspiration. Uh, thanks very much for viewing and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.